because the other ones came off in my mute bag. I'll play a little excerpt from Gershwin's Porgy and Bess. Rhapsody or Fantasy for Orchestra and Violin, I can't remember, but this is a... Uh, no, no, no. I got this wrong. This is a Strike Up the Band Overture. This is at the very beginning for all trombones. It's kind of a B-flat scale. I really like the sound of this mute. It's very... It's still full, but it's got that brightness you get the um, with the straight mute, um, and it plays pretty well almost everywhere. Let's find those dead spots. So around low C to about low or a pedal G below that, um, this doesn't work. It's got a dead spot. Doesn't play. We'll talk about how you can change that maybe a little bit at the end of this video. So that's my first tom crown and another tom crown that is identical but with the original corks um, and some duct tape on the end. Play the same excerpt. This one is dusty. <laughs> I like this mute too. It's just a little bit brighter um, and it might be because it sticks out a little bit farther, the different corks on it. I'm not sure. Let's find the dead spot. So the same dead spot, low C, around to pedal A flat. You can play pedal G on this and this mute um, pretty well. That's kind of the end of the dead zone. So a similar dead zone, um, and that's kind of a bummer because you might have to play in that range. Third mute, uh, third mute. Third mute is a Joe Rowell, um copper bottom straight mute. This is a little heavier, which I don't really like. It's a pretty cool mute. It's got just a little bit different take on the sound than these two mutes do. Um, and I kind of like it. It is inoffensive to me. And then let's find the dead zone. Dead zone is just a little bit larger, it extends down to pedal G this time. Can't play that note almost at all. So, cool mute, I like the sound. It actually plays a little bit better, I think, in the low register until you get to that dead zone. And then my last one for bass is this trump core um, lyric straight mute. Um, this is fiber, so obviously not nearly as heavy. Um, and obviously a different shape, different sound, different everything. And I'll play the same excerpt, but you get the idea. That this mute isn't the same sound that these are going for. This is really more of a lyric kind of feel. Just a 
much more mellow, less uh, bright, tinny kind of sound than these have. And let's listen for the dead zone. <sighs> That's probably the best thing about it. Not that I'm ever going to really need it um, to cover that whole range. Um, but there are no dead zones, even up high. And not that these have any problems up high. There's some bad B flats and E flats for me. But you get the idea. This horn or this, uh, this mute works everywhere. It just sounds good everywhere. Just a much less, uh, much less loud in general sound than these have. So that's all my bass straight mutes. Here's my one tenor straight mute. This is up. Oh, this is a Tom Crown st standard um, straight mute. I'm going to play the same excerpt because the tenor drum ones have it too. <laughs> So this mute is super loud. Um, kind of bright, but just really loud in general. Um, maybe it's just the feedback I get, I'm not sure. Um, maybe it projects more. Uh, but it, man, it is super loud. I kind of like it, but it's very loud. I'm not sure how it would really gel with my horn over here, playing the same mute, ostensibly, for bass drum on. Let's find those dead zones. <laughs> So this dead zone is from like low D below the staff down to about pedal E, almost an octave of notes you can't play because of this mute. Of course, on tenor trombone, you need that range so much less than you would on a bass mute. Let's check this out on the small tenor because I also have this here. Basically all um, mutes for tenor will fit on both large and small tenor. Of course there are exceptions and I have some exceptions right here. And I just played that wrong with there. Played it with an A flat instead of a A natural. It should be A natural. But this mute actually sounds and plays a little bit better on this horn. It works in all ranges, there's kind of no dead zone except for the notes you can't play anyway because that's a straight horn. It's just really easy to play. I like this one a lot. Um, the problem is, of course, you almost never use a metal straight on a small horn like this. You're going to use a Hughes and Berg or the red and white fiber mutes we all know and love. I'm almost always going to use a stone line um, straight mute, and I'm getting one very soon actually. So there we go, that's all the straight mutes I have. Gives you an idea of like how they sound, how the brands differ just a little bit, and where those dead zones are, because that's kind of important. Up next is cut mutes.